None of us are aware of the inhuman torture that the Israeli occupiers have been inflicting on the innocent Palestinians. You may have seen a lot of news about this topic, but the story of the movie that I am going to tell you today, it will beat your imagination, because it is not a story or news, a true story that happened to a little Palestinian girl. The memory of the incident is still carried by the girl. You are about to witness a horrifying true story. All I can say is that after watching this movie, I was unable to sleep whole night. Additionally, you'll begin to despise Israelis. So without further ado, let's get to the film's major plot. This is a picture of a little village in Palestine from 1948, just after World War II. In that village, a few young girls were having a game of togetherness by a fountain. Farah is the name of this female. The narrative of her life will be revealed to us. Farah always desired she would go to school and get older. Her father is the village chief in that community. Farah attends this village's soul girl school. A priest instructs them there. Farah's last day of classes was today. At the conclusion of the study, everyone addressed the cleric with their wishes. Then Farah told the priest that she wanted to move to the city so she could continue her studies. But this is not at all how their clergy feels, because he opposes girls attending higher education. When Farah leaves school, she discovers her recently arrived uncle from the city. They relocated to the village as a result of the conflict in the metropolis. Farida is the name of the girl, she is Farah's cousin. Their ages are comparable. Farida and Farah were conversing while sitting down. Farah is shocked to learn that Farida would continue to live in the community, and Farah informs Farida of her ambition to attend a university in the big metropolis. The two sisters' tale continues, but suddenly they hear a motor humming, and as they step outside, they discover Israeli army vehicles driving into their community. There were additional young children around, and they began firing their toy weapons at the car. Farah mimicked them as well. You can see how much animosity for Israel is ingrained in these kids' heads. When Farah eventually makes it home, she discovers another uncle of hers stopping by. Since Farah's mother passed away when she was still a child, her uncle rarely paid her a visit. Now that Farah is a little older, her uncle suggests to her father that they get married right away. As a result of the beginning of the country's conflict and the movement of all Israeli forces through our area. While her father and uncle were having these conversations, Farah was listing from a distance. After saying goodbye to everyone, Farah's uncle departs. Farah goes back to her room and picks up a book to read. Farah is really focused in her studies when she abruptly overhears her father and her teacher talking. Her teacher advises Farah's father to get married right away because Farah's time in the village school is up. Farah desires a significant life achievement. So Farah angrily leaves her room and tells her father and teacher's intentions, I want to study more, I want to go to the city and get educated in higher education. Her father gets a bit angry seeing this behavior. In the next scene, a boy comes to Farah's house to give food. This boy's name is Nasser and he is Farah's cousin. And since he was a child, his marriage to Farah was predetermined. But Farha does not like Nasser at all. The scene changes, a girl of Farah's age was getting married in their village, Farah and her sister came there, they both started enjoying a lot. But suddenly, Farah became silent, her face became completely sad, because she remembers that, after a few days she will also get married like that and with that her dreams will be lost forever. The two sisters were returning home from the wedding ceremony, and that's when Farah saw her father and uncle talking about her marriage. Farah doesn't like it at all, she tells her father that, Dad, I don't want to get married now. Her father says, everyone of your age in our village is getting married, you have to get married too. Farah's face went completely dry, she felt that her dreams had ended here, but, then her father gives her a surprise, he took out a paper from his pocket. It was an admission form for a city school. Farah is very happy to see this, she is shouting next to the wall, my dad, is best dad in the world. And then Farah's eyes suddenly went down, there were some Palestinian soldiers standing there. They have come to meet Farah's father. Since her dad was a leader, he secretly helped those soldiers. Farah's father was talking to those soldiers, and Farah was listening from behind. 
After talking, the soldiers left their homes. Farah realizes something terrible is about to happen. The following morning, Farah awakens to silence all around her. She exits her room and scans the area for signs of her father, but she is unable to locate him. Now feeling a little anxious, Farah notices her father emerging from their home's other side of the wall. There is a door in the new wall he constructed. As her father continues to fortify the wall, Farah comes to the conclusion that there must be something concealed beyond it. Even today, two sisters, Farah and Farida were sitting on that swing and talking. Farah tells her sister that, her father has agreed to enroll her in a city school. Farida is also very happy to hear this. Farah's expression darkens when she realizes she must leave her father. And no one is looking after her father. So Farah tells Farida, after I finish my studies, I will return to this village and open a school here. There was a loud noise as the two sisters were saying these words. Farah and Farida hurried towards their village as soon as they heard the disturbance. Israeli army have stormed their community, and residents are fleeing in an attempt to save their lives. Farah's uncle appears in the crowd, attempting to entice Farah and Farida into his car, but Farah refuses to abandon her father. Even if Farida gets in the car, Farah won't. Then Farah's father approaches and asks his uncle to take his daughter away in a secure vehicle. As soon as Farah entered the vehicle, it began to move. Farah then turned to face her father while still in the car. Father stands helpless on the front lines. What the girl experiences in this scene. Farah rushed to her father as soon as she opened the car door and gave his father a firm embrace. Her uncle and his daughter left her. Then Farah's father entered the house with her, and Farah's father took a gun from a hidden location in the house. He was preparing for battle, but when he and Farah approach the main door, he realizes they are too late. They were encircled on all sides by Israelites. He returns to the house with Faraha, and it was Farah's father who built the secret room behind the wall. He pulls Farah into that room and tells her she will not go until he arrives. Farah begs her father to stay with her, but Farah's father reminds her, I am a leader, and our soldiers desperately need my help. Don't be concerned, I'll be back. Her father then closes the door from the outside, and he walked away. Farah is sitting in a dark room. She also hears a lot of shooting outside. It grew quiet all around at one point, the noises outside stopped, and then Farah heard footsteps outside. Farah believes her father has come outdoors, so she keeps calling him, Dad. But no further response came from outside, and the footsteps faded for a while. She sits on the floor, defeated. As the sun sets, she discovers a hurricane, she turned it on and looked around the room. She saw a little hole in a wall corner. Farah glances through the hole and sees their front gate, it was shattered. And there is no one around, there is complete silence. Farah collapsed on the floor, frustrated. She was starving, and there was some food in the room. Farah begins to consume them. She was startled to hear footsteps outside again. So she began calling his father once more. But, in no time, there was tremendous shelling, and all that could be heard were human cries from all sides. The surrounds were filled with smoke, and that smoke was invading the room. Farah started stuffing bags beneath the door to keep the odors out, and she collapsed on the floor once more. Farah looks out the window the next morning, her face filthy, she has been locked in the room for a long time, as if time does not pass. As a result, Farah began playing alone in that room. The day has turned into night, and the rain has begun outside. Some of the rain soaked into the watery terrain, and Farah began to play with it as well. Farah's life has been cut short by another night. The food in the room is running out as time passes, and, as Farah's appetite grows, she is compelled to eat the potatoes there raw. Farah brought out Hurricane and her book and began reading it that night. The admission form for Farah City School was included in that book. Farah paid close attention. Meanwhile, the Hurricane's oil is steadily depleting, and Farah uses a fire extinguisher to set fire to several straws in one location. Farah discovers a knife and attempts to unlock the door with it, but her efforts are futile. She collapsed once more, her chest heavy with grief. When Farah awoke the next morning to the sound of people chatting, she immediately went to the hole and saw some people outside. 
There was a woman among them, and it was evident that she was pregnant. Because the wife is in serious labor pain, her husband is attempting to deliver her there. After some time, the woman gave birth to a son. The dad was overjoyed because he had two daughters previously. Abu Muhammad was the name of the individual. He whispered the call to prayer into the ear of his newborn son. Farah kept addressing the man by name as soon as she heard his name. The man was perplexed as to where the noise was coming from. He quickly found the location. Farah then tells the man everything and pleads for his assistance. The man makes many attempts to smash down the door of Farah's room. But then an Israeli automobile pulled up in front of Farah's residence. The man fled the house, hiding his wife and child, but Israeli soldiers apprehended him. The Israeli forces then seized the man and went inside the residence. The man continually stated that the house was not mine, I had entered to get some water. A masked man was also present. He kept telling the Israeli soldiers, this man doesn't belong in this neighborhood, and this house doesn't belong to that man. However, Commander becomes concerned when he notices some drops of blood there. This blood was spilled during the man's wife's delivery. The commander orders a search of the entire residence. The commander then began to make his way towards Farah's room. Farah held a knife and prepared to fight with it. Outside, the demonic shouts of Israeli soldiers can be heard. They discovered Abu Muhammad's wife. A female soldier searches for her, which causes the soldier to realize that the woman had recently given birth to a kid. Then the soldier began to treat the woman horribly, which was painful to witness. The woman couldn't take it any longer and spat in his face, because it was their country, but they were now subjugated. Meanwhile, the soldiers discovered his two daughters. Abu Muhammad now knelt at the commander's feet, pleading for his family's life. The masked man also questions the commander, asking why he is doing this to these innocent people. But the commander pays no attention to anyone. The family was lined up, and the soldiers were instructed to kill them. The whole area was shaken by the sound of gunfire and some innocent people and children were killed. Everything is silent. The masked man who arrives at Farha's door is none other than Farha's father. He simply called his daughter Farah and left. Before leaving, the commander ordered his soldiers to shoot the newborn baby as well. However, he maintains that there is no need to waste a single bullet on these Palestinians, instead kick the kid to death. The soldier also tries, but his leg gets stuck. The soldier also is a man, no matter how Yehuda he is. If the child is left alone, he will die. So he drapes her handkerchief over the baby's face, slowly suffocating it to death. It is not a narrative, it occurred to you. And, fact, the infant was only born for a few hours. The toddler shouted all over the place. Tell me, whichever faith you follow, what was wrong with these youngsters? Then Farah was going insane within the child's self-screaming room. She was determined to leave the room at any cost. She wishes to visit the child and makes numerous attempts, but all of her efforts are futile. The child's crying gradually ended as well. Farah is resting close to the door, listening to the baby. Little Muhammad was the name she gave to the infant. The next morning, Farah is awake, and she discovers a pistol. She takes a lot of confidence in her head as she inserts the rounds into those weapons. She has to escape out of this room. Farah closes her eyes and shoots through the door, the sun shining on her face. The previously closed door in front of her has abruptly opened. Farah moved gently out of there. She takes some water from a water container beside her in silence, and then he stares at the youngster. Then came the movie's worst sequence, which nearly silenced me. The child has died. Flies are flying over the small man's corpse, and ants have already begun eating it. Such a youngster arrived in the same world in which we now live, and such was his departure. No one in the community is alive when Farah appears. Where people were living blissfully even two days ago, there is now only the stench of corpses. Farha quietly observes as she rocks back and forth in her favorite rocking chair. The admission application for that school was pulled out of her pocket and launched into the air. Farha got to their feet and moved carefully away, leaving the empty cradle and their lovely village intact. Farah is making her way into the unknown. And the real girl's name was Radia, and she walked from here to the Syrian refugee camp and told her story there. 
Radiya sought for her father for as long as she could remember, but she never found him. Thousands of similar Radiya stories are still being penned in Palestinian streets. Just close your eyes for a moment and pray for these individuals. Besides, we don't have anything else to do. So, I won't ask you how you liked the movie, because you haven't heard any stories today. However, you must leave a remark and if desired subscribe to our channel. I sincerely appreciate you taking the time to watch the video. As of today, see you again with a new story. Thank you very much.